it is Friday. Hello, everyone. That means it's time for Margaritas with Margarita Cheng CFP Pro, where for 15 minutes or so, you'll learn from industry experts how to flex your financial muscle. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV, and we know you are going to enjoy meeting today's guests, Joellen Nicholson and Daniel Blake of University Impact. They will be talking about donor advised funds and how more donors can have more impact. So take it away, Rita. Well, thank you so much. You know that we love the theme of impact investing. And of course, I can think of no better um, topic to kick off margaritas with margarita than um, impact investing with university impact. So welcome, Joellen and, and Daniel. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. So happy to be here today with you. Awesome. Well, we are too. So I, you can both answer this first question mm -hmm. um, because it is so important. So tell us about university impact. And I think it would be helpful also for viewers to know what triple DIF or triple DAF means and how this is different. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a great question. So at University Impact, so we built our donor advised um, fund platform really around kind of three key areas. Hence, you get the, the UI triple DAF. It's really about setting a standard of doing traditional philanthropy and impact investing better uh, and investing in early stage companies and organizations that are solving social and environmental problems. And then the third thing is creating the next generation of, of social impact leaders. So these three things combined, we think make for this really unique uh, donor advised fund platform that is a, a triple kind of impact that is unique. And when you kind of dig into those, those three key areas, you know, the, the first one about doing uh, philanthropy better, we look at it as, you know, we've created our donor advised fund platform to kind of really personalize uh, philanthropy and impact investing, where our model is about personalizing it for, for the donor and really engaging them in outcome-based impact. And we like to think about our, our uh, donor advised fund as the, the client's back office, where we're out there kind of researching and finding them opportunities to, to use their, their donor advised funds for, for, for giving. Uh, we're doing due diligence, we're managing their funds, we, we are reporting back to them on the performance of that investment, both from a financial perspective and an impact perspe perspective. And we really want to help them kind of balance that social impact of what they're doing with their giving. And then that second piece, really that, in, that investing part is we know that there's a lot of persistent problems in the world. And that's here in, in the US in emerging and developing markets. But there's also really many, you know, there's a lot of organizations out there solving these problems. Um, but one of the key um, issues for these organizations is the lack of funding. And especially in this gap that we call the pioneer gap, that's 50 to kind of $500,000. So what we're doing is we're trying to find these organizations and bring them to the donor advised fund world and say, here are these opportunities of organizations that you can give a grant to. You can use impact investing, you can give a loan to, or even an equity investment. And then the third part is of how do you find these? You have to have the resources and the manpower to do this. So we've created, we want to create the next generation of, of, of social impact leaders. And so it's unique to UI and why we have the name University Impact is our associates are all university students, um, undergrad students and graduate students who are getting that real life experience in, in social impact, but they're out there kind of sourcing and finding opportunities around the world, conducting the due diligence, um, bringing opportunities to, to our do donors as things that they could invest their donor advice fund in. And we really think this is, you know, combining these three things together, we think is a, a really kind of powerful kind of philanthropy and impact investing model. Without question, win, yeah. win, win, this can and will change the world. So Daniel, do you want to expand upon um, Joellen's comment? Um, yeah, you know, looking at 
Joellen did a fantastic job at outlining uh, University Impact and the, the Donor Advice Fund platform. I, I think what's really powerful is if you, if you are an individual that has a, a Donor Advice Fund, you're always looking for how can I be um, more deliberate with my charitable giving? And, you know, Joellen talked about how you have all these back office, you, ha you have this back office support, people finding opportunities for you, doing that due diligence. So I think that's really powerful. And this connection, and Joellen touched on it, is by providing these additional services to the donor, helping them be more deliberate, you're also providing this hands-on immersive learning opportunity for the next generation of social impact leaders. And so by simply being more deliberate in your charitable giving, you, you really have this double-edged sword of also creating this impact of training these university students. And so it's that combination that I think really becomes very powerful. I love it. And when we, we, we touched on this a little bit, when people talk about impact investing, it, it, it is not just the financial impact, but it's the mm -hmm. social impact. And how do you quantify that? It's not just the rate of return. We brought clean water to 10,000 people. Uh, we brought education to 750 girls, for example. So how does university impact place priority on creating these opportunities for donors to have both the social and the financial impact, or maybe just the social impact, if that's what's important to them? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And before we get into the specifics of that question, I think it's important to make sure that we all understand what we're talking about when we say impact. It's really turned into this buzzword. People throw it, you know, throw it around pretty loosely. So you have social responsible investing, which is really a negative screen. You say, I don't want to be invested in things that I think are offensive. I don't want to be invested in private prisons, in tobacco, in you know, whatever it is. So you, you have SRI investing in one bucket. Then you have ESG investing, which is saying, let's look at all the companies and, and assign them a ranking based off of what they're doing around the environment, around society, around their, their governance. Um, with impact investing, we say, let's look at companies where their core product is solving a social or an environmental problem. And so as, as, the, business is success, as the business is successful, as the business scales, it's inherently solving um, whatever social or environmental problem it is that, that you care about. And so kind of step one at University Impact is actually being uh, fairly selective in what we call uh, what is an impact investment, making sure that the core of the business model is addressing the, the problem that, that you care about. And then Joellen also uh, referenced how we care about this outcome-based uh, model. And so, you know, just as a very simple example, you can look at a soup kitchen. It can be, you know, delivering lots of meals. It looks like they're doing a lot of work. They have really fantastic intentions. But if people are still hungry, I would argue, the, the soup kitchen isn't addressing the problem of reducing hunger. So even though it has all this activity going on, you're not getting the outcome that you care about. And so at University Impact, in addition to being fairly selective about what we consider is an impact investment, is making sure that we're always tracking what are the outcomes. Are they, even though they have good intentions, even though they want to solve this problem, are they really solving the, the core problem that, that you as a donor care about. Thank you for that. And I absolutely love how you explained all the terminology because they are different, SRI, um, ESG, and impact investing. So I think it's really good for viewers and listeners to understand the, the nuances. Um, so this is a really important question because as you know, I am a CFP Pro, Certified Financial Planner, how do you typically work with financial advisors and financial planners, uh, like with their clients um, who are your or donors, mm -hmm. um, giving through the UI triple DAP? Yeah, yeah. So we, um, Dan and I, we can kind of both kind of go in on this. So we, I think we like to make it really easy and, and flexible to to work with with the donor with the advisors to work uh, as we work with their with their donors 
Um, Because we really think it's important to kind of stay for the advisors to stay connected to to their client while they're working with their philanthropic, you know, financial goals. Um, And so then this means that we give them the the ability to really kind of choose who the custodian is. I think that's one thing um, for who the custodian is for the assets that they manage for their clients. Um, and I think one of the other key things is we don't really have a minimum for, for our, our DAFs. So that allows many different financial advisors to work with, you know, a range of their different clients who might, you know, look at a donor advised fund as an advantage of, of something that they want to do. Dan, is there something else there that we should be adding to, to, to that? No, I, I think that really covers it. Um, most donor advised funds, because there is a threshold, aren't managed by a financial advisor. If you look at the average size of a donor advised fund in the United States, it's about $150,000. And the threshold at Fidelity Charitable to manage it, to have a financial advisor manage your donor advised fund is $150,000. So there's a lot of donor advised funds um, that really end up just being out of sight, out of mind. They're not managed in the the regular course of business. So like Joellen said, not having that threshold makes it so much easier, both for the donor and for the the financial advisor. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing that I would add to that kind of even beyond the, the investment aspect of, of looking at the, you know, the actual funds that the, the advice, the donor keeps in there, is that we really look at the advisor as, as partners. So how do we, we work with them and help them, A, understand impact investing as well, since it is kind of this newer field and especially having it coupled with a, with a donor advised fund. So how can we you know, have work with them and bring seminars or case studies or do something for their firm um, that we can you know, help them out? How can we help them help their clients as well become informed even before they might have a donor advised fund. So we really like to, you know, in, involve them in that process um, wherever they may be and, you know, whatever their, na- whatever their needs may be. And to, to that point, financial advisors are incredible at helping a, a client create their, their financial strategy. Where are you today? What are your goals for the future? You know, how do we go from point A to point B? One thing that does get left out a lot, and there's a lot of planning around the lifestyle and you know what you want to accomplish from a financial standpoint, um, but this this conversation around philanthropy can take a, a back seat with a lot of financial advisors. And part of what we're doing by removing this threshold and providing all of these these services is it allows this philanthropy conversation to re- remain a part of the the conversation mm-hmm. with what are your financial goals. But University Impact, we're doing all the heavy lifting on helping find those opportunities, you know, doing those educational seminars like Joellen talked about. And so in addition to that financial strategy, you can now now help your clients have this philanthropic strategy. What are the causes that you care about? What are the geographies that you care about? Um, And how can you best accomplish those those goals? And I think it's really powerful for the financial advisor to, to be the one driving that conversation with uh with her clients well thank you for that one of the reasons why i invited you is because when i met with joellen uh, via zoom i was so impressed i saw projects in indonesia i have family from southeast asia and i think there's a project on the island of java java is a very populous nation in mm-hmm. fact um i have family members who remind me that there are actually more na- speakers. Uh, there's more individuals whose native language is Javanese than German in the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's pretty wow. amazing, right? That is so, amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, I do have family in Germany and on the island of Java. So that's why I use that <laughs> example. Oh, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, just a, a real life example, we... Uh, we had a financial advisor reach out. And they said, my client brought up that they're really interested in seeing what they can do on Navajo Nation. Candidly, they don't know what the problems are on Navajo Nation. They don't know what organizations they should support down on, on Navajo Nation. They don't know, you know how to, to best get involved. 
So you have so many people that have these charitable inclinations. And I think it's really interesting that one of the first people that they think to ask is their financial advisor. Here's this fantastic resource in their life. And they say, this is what I'm interested in. What do you think? But it can be really hard to figure out what are the best opportunities in Java, in Navajo Nation, you know, halfway around the world. And again, that's really where university impact comes into play. Mm -hmm. You can tell us these are the geographies. This is the impact area. And we're going to go find those best in class opportunities for you. So this is the fun question for each one of you. Um, of course, mm -hmm. all the projects in investment are incredibly impactful, but which one stands out to each one of you? If you have to pick a favorite. I'll, uh, I'll let you go first, Joelle. Oh gosh, Dan. I, don't, <laughs> I was hoping you'd go first because I have so many. Um, you know, um, I, I like to go with one of our, our projects right now because I just think it's a, it's a company called Cold Hubs. They're out of uh, Nigeria, actually. It's one of my favorites. And they, you know, they're creating these hubs along, um, I guess, the, the road to kind of help small shareholder farmers um, cool little storage units. And it was to keep farmer produce longer, you know, because it would go bad um, as they were trying to kind of sell it into market. So that was one thing that they were doing. But our investment actually helped them buy cold storage trucks. So imagine that in, in a country where, you know, it's hot, um, produce can go bad, this affects the incomes of farmers. Now they were able to kind of take, you know, produce from one kind of area of the country to the next, north and south, and keep it in cold storage trucks, which is something we take for granted, right, in the United States that we get kind of produce. And they were the first, they're the first kind of cold storage truck provider in, in Nigeria, which is huge. And the impact that it had on um, farmers and the outcomes as far as livelihood, as the, the income rose, and then what those farmers were able to do for their families was tremendous. So that's actually kind of one of my, um, one of my favorite investments, because there's, there's a lot that I, I think that are really kind of tremendous. <laughs> and I love that story. And you, yeah. Daniel? Yeah, Cold Hubs really is a, a fantastic uh, company. Um, one of my favorites is a company called Central Park Bees. They're located in Tanzania. And again, they're working with small shareholder farmers, but they, they help these farmers introduce beehives onto their, their farm. And so uh, they now have bees, the bees are producing honey and Central Park bees will buy the honey from the, the small shareholder farmer. And so it allows the farmer with very little incremental work to in, uh, double to triple their annual income with this uh, addition of, of honey. And Central Park bees, they process all of it and then they're selling it throughout Eastern Africa and, and Europe. Um, and one thing that I think is actually very interesting with both of these opportunities um, is there for-profit businesses? Mm -hmm. So these these aren't non-profit. They're for-profit businesses. Uh, they're sustainable. They're able to to grow and help more people. And so what University Impact did in both cases is we actually gave each one of them uh, a loan, which candidly is pretty unique for a donor advice fund. And so any of the returns off of that loan go back into the donor advice fund for future giving. And so here you have you know, the, these individual donors that are providing these loans, they're doing good by providing these loans, they're generating returns, all going back into their DAF for future giving. And so they're creating impact while at the same time growing their DAF so that in the future they can have a, an even greater impact. And it just creates this really virtuous cycle. Truly beautiful. So, of course, we know that viewers and, and listeners absolutely love this topic as much as I do. Social media handles, websites, before we let you go. Yeah, so our, our website is uitripledaf.org. And I mean, you can find us, of course, on, um, I'll just say, say this one, we'll see if you can find us on, on LinkedIn, of course. Um, that's one of the areas that you can find us. And then our um, social media handle, you can find us, it's the same on both um, on Twitter and on, on Instagram. It's uh, UI, um, what is it, UV Impact. Uh, 
UV Impact, I, at UV Impact. I, I almost put .org on there, but we don't need the .org on our Instagram handles or, or on Twitter. So that's where you can find us. Well, thanks so much. What a positive way to start the weekend. So now back to you, Hope. Yep, the Thank gift you. of giving. You guys are amazing. It's wonderful to see entrepreneurs doing such great work. So thank you for being on Margaritas with Margarita. Margarita, next weekend, next Friday at 5 p.m., we are going to have Felicia Gupal, the author and founder of Financial Control Mastery. Tell us a little bit about her. So Felicia is a CFP ambassador, just like me, a fellow ambassador. So her job uh, she is a certified financial planner, but as a CFP board ambassador, she educates the public, policymakers, and media on the benefits of financial planning. She's going to talk about the five Ds that women experience throughout their lives. Ah, fantastic. So we'll look forward to hearing what they are. Actually, you can get a little sneak peek on Rita's website and incandescentradio.com. So Joelle and Daniel, thank you both so much for being here. Thank you to all of our viewers and listeners, and we will see you next week on Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.